Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another video of ours. Now this is the review show for the Premier Division uh, from Friday night's games. Now, a little bit of a disaster. JP on who did this show with me, but for some reason the file got corrupted. Now there were two videos done as such, so he's on for the Waterford Shells match. But unfortunately, everything else got deleted, basically. So uh, it's a pity because we put a lot of time into it. And um, it was obviously a good show and he was on with me. So it's a, it's a huge pity that that actually happened. So I'm just going to motor on, have to basically re-record the four games um, myself, basically. And um, he'll be on later on in this show, as you'll see, for the Waterford Shells one. So uh, sorry about that, but we'll get into it anyway. I was at Dalyman Park as Bowles finished 2-2 with Sligo Rovers in the opening night of the season. Match day vlog, so check that out. 2-2, brilliant stuff, four goals. So it was uh, the best game of the night in terms of goals. Uh, really enjoyed it, very good atmosphere. The Sligo fans are brilliant in with them for this particular match. And um, for the most part, the Sligo players gave them something to shout about. Five minutes in, though, Ryan Cork gives Bowles a lead. Probably the goal of the night uh, between all the games, really, it was a very good move involving James Clark and uh, Ryan Cork turns and uh, finishes brilliantly. Actually, was left foot after five minutes or one nil up. Hutchison equalizes after 50 23 minutes, rather, for Sligo Rovers after a good play than the left between him and Perry. It was a bit of a ricochet, and the ball ends up in the back of the Bohemians' net. By that point, it was deserved. And right in half time, Hartman with a good individual goal. Didn't Bowles be disappointed. It, didn't defend it well, but it was a good individual goal, brilliant feat, um, and finished, um, kind of a scruffy finish, actually, but um, it was a very good individual goal from Hartman. That gets Sligo 2-1 lead at half time, and in the first half, it was a case of, I think the first 15 minutes, Bowles were probably the best side, actually. Sligo had seven new players in their team, Bowles had four, and it took them a while to get organised. Bowles took advantage of that. Maybe could have been two up at that point. Actually, there was a ball into the box from Dale Rooney, I think it was. And uh, Danny Grant has a chance at the far post to head it, but completely misses the header. And um, yeah, you're thinking that should be 2 0. But Saga really warmed into the game. Power and Hartman really shown on the wings. Hutchison getting forward well. J.R. Wilson playing very well in this game as well. Morhan pulling the strings in the middle park for them. Um, second half, start of second half, I'd say first 20, 25 minutes. Bowls were very flat. It was all Sligo. Um, Hartman went off with a knock, though, which was a problem. Will, Will Fitzgerald came on. And uh, Ellis, Chap Ellis Chapman, I should say, went off a little bit later as well for Sligo. And uh, the subs probably didn't work for Sligo in terms of, you know, have they the squad you'd wonder, the actual bench. Um, it's hard to tell, to be honest with you, but... You know, they lost some important players going off the field and they, decide, they started to sit back a little bit, didn't they, really, in the last, what, 10 minutes or so. And even though it wasn't a case of Bowles throwing the kitchen sink on them, they did bring on Dylan Connolly in the last 20 minutes or so. And Connolly was causing serious problems then at right driving at them. He had a header, actually, in fact, that hit the post prior to that um, and was giving Hutchison problems. In the end, four minutes into injury time, uh, James Clark started a move Fed it out to Connolly, kept his run into the box, completely untracked though. And Connolly uh, lifts one around the penalty spot, and Clark is unmarked, but it's a superb header into the corner. And Bowles probably get out of jail with a point, a point that they didn't deserve, uh, a point that Sligo felt would feel that they should have had two more points in the game and won the game. But overall, um, you know, the Bowles fans would be more disappointed with the performance. But the Sligo fans would be more disappointed with the fact that they didn't get the three points. So at least from Bowles' point of view, they got something out of the game despite playing poorly. The main issue for Bowles in this game for me is as well, Rob Cormall goes off injured, of course, after around 34 minutes. What I mean by that is two centre-backs of the club, Cornwall and uh, Keane Byrne, and they will sign more. But this is the first game of the season and you're going into it with two centre-backs of the club. One goes off injured. What happens? Paddy Kirk has to move the centre back alongside Keane Byrne. Uh, Michael Lylander comes on as a sub. He moves to left back, and Bart is at right back. But then at half time, there's another reshuffle. Uh, Flores goes to centre back with Keane Byrne. Lylander moves to right back. Bart comes off, and Kirk moves back to left back. So you think all those reshuffling in defence just because you haven't signed another centre back 
Um, that's extremely messy, extremely messy. And, you know, I'd love to know what Bowles fans think about that, but that's messy to say the least. Uh, all in all, interesting game, um, entertaining game. It was definitely entertaining. And uh, it's a point, it's a point of peace. So Andre City and Drottedy United at the Brandy. Well, we're there, City were 2 1 winners over Drottedy United. Um, yeah, there he'd be delighted with the three points. Only two teams won at the weekend, a couple of draws, three draws. So they'd be delighted with the three points. It's actually mad how there were three draws and two wins by the odd goal. And um, just to say as well that there was 34,000 people that attended the first round of games over the course of the weekend, which was tremendous to see. This is in the first division as well, but it was fantastic to see. But on to the game itself, and Derry City, of course, won by two goals to one. Most of the drama really happened in the second half. Derry had most of the running in the first half, most of the chances. Um, Duffy was sharp. He played the ball across the edge of the box where Huben was waiting, but unfortunately, Huben had made the run um, towards the goal. Duffy kind of played it back near to the penalty spot, um, but that was an opportunity for Derry. But one minute in the second half, uh, for the first, I'd say, what? 20 minutes, second half, everything happened, really. But Boyce scores a very good goal. We, Wogan with a bit of a dodgy clearance, but Duffy then tries to lob Wogan and then um, gets it wrong, basically, and eventually comes out to Boyce, who you think is going to hit in his right foot, but then turns. He's in the middle of the goal, uh, or the middle of the pitch, I should say, outside the box. But he turns and hits it with his left foot and finds the back of the net into the corner past Wogan. And... Uh, you know, Ronan Boyce has that in his locker. He's scored goals before. He's capable of scoring goals uh, for Derry City. And that was a much-needed lift a minute in the second half to give them the lead. But a couple of minutes later, Ryan Brennan uh, misses the opportunity to to get draw at a level, really, from the penalty spot. McJanet, it was a high boot. It's a foul. It's a penalty. And um, Brennan sets up to take it. And Mar makes a good save to his left-hand side, um, which was huge because draw never got the get level in the game. After 63 minutes, then Pat Huben scores his first goal for the club with a typical Huben type goal. Um, suspicion of handball in the build-up, yes, but uh, the shot comes in for Patchy and it's parried by Wogan. But who's on it? Who reads it first? Who's looking for the rebound before the shot is taken? It's Pat Huben. And Huben buries it to put Derry 2-0 up. And you're thinking that sets them on their way. Four minutes later, though, Evan Weir scores a free kick from Drotted, for Drotted. And I think it takes a deflection, this one, if I'm honest with you. Not to take anything away, it's a very good free kick. But it looks like it hits maybe the top of the wall and loops into the net. Um, but it's a good free kick from Weir and try to get back into the game 2-1. Um, they would be very happy with this win. Draw, they'd be a bit disappointed, but um, a difficult opening game in the season for them going up to the Brandywell. Um, again, they'll take some positives from it, but I think Derry City... We'll be extremely happy with this win, first game of the season. Next up, we're going to, where are we going? Eamon DC Park, where Galway United took on St. Patrick's Athletic. And, uh, yeah, I mean, conditions are horrible. We're horrible in this game, weren't they, to be fair? Um, the pitch was not in good condition. It cut up, and it cut up very early as well. Um, it helped, and it was ideal for pass that they got a very early lead from Jamie Lennon after three minutes because... Um, I think you just get a sense that if it wasn't for the early goal, this might have finished nil-nil because the pitch got worse as it went on. And, um, yeah, it was a corner kick, but Redmond lays it off at the edge of the area and Lennon fires home and rifles it home, in fact, to give Pats the one the lead. And that was it. Uh, that was the only goal of the game. Pats a couple of bits of chances in the first half. Hurley has a shot that squirms wide. Um, God, we do hit the post later on, etc. Stephen Walsh gets sent off after complaining about a possible penalty. I think it was the second yellow. Uh, I don't think it was a penalty personally, but Walsh got his red, red card. And um, yeah, Pats dealt with it. They dealt with everything Galway threw at them. Um, they played three at the back with Connor Keeley in the middle. And um, with the conditions that are in it, um, you know, that early goal gave them something to, to hold on to. And Come away with Galway with a very from Galway with a very good three points, as I said, particularly in those conditions. And they dealt with the, you know, the set pieces, the corners, the long balls that Galway tried to fire into the box very impressively. Um, and at this stage of the season, it is it really is all about picking up results. As I said, a couple of other teams haven't won this weekend, so 
to go to Eamon DC Park to grind out that result is a very good result for Pats. Keating was up front in this one as well, led the line very well. He um he often dropped back a bit deep, which he's very capable of doing, and he tried to lay the ball off to the likes of Levy and Mulrain. He's very good at that as well. Um, seen him do that quite a few times for Cork. But despite the defeat, I don't think Gall would be too despondent or disappointed because, you know, Pats are considered to be one of the better teams in the league. And for the most part, it was relatively even in the game. And, you know, Pats had to be focused and concentrated here to get the, to get the three points and to defend um, the way Galway basically play. No other team really plays with that in the league and Galway are going to beat teams in this league. There's no doubt about it, uh, particularly at in DC Park. So, um, yeah, Pats would be delighted with that start, particularly after the President's Cup defeat, I think, last week. They would have been very disappointed with that performance and maybe one or two alarm bells as well. Sometimes that can be a good thing, uh, particularly for the players uh, and management going into the season. But, you know, when you win your first league game of the season, whether you win 3-0 or lose 3-0 or whatever it is in the President's Cup final, it becomes very irrelevant very, very quickly. Um, so, very good three points for Pats in a row. Galway, a little disappointed, no doubt, but, um, you know, definitely some green shoots for them there too. The next one, and we have Shamrock Rovers 1, Dundalk 1. The surprise of the weekend, probably yes. Most people would have said Shamrock Rovers would win this game, particularly with the President's Cup performance because Pats... Uh, still missing quite a few players, Shamrock Rovers, and they don't want to start the season slowly like they did last season. But what's worse in this game for them, the fact that, you know, Ferruja went off injured. It looked like it could be a dislocated shoulder, so he could be out for a time. And Trevor Clark came on, he went off injured as well. So even though they've a good and big squad, you know, it's the last thing they need. Lee Grace didn't start the game, which was a strange one as well, particularly when you consider that Pico Lopez is out. Still haven't got McInef and Byrne and that. Um... But yeah, an interesting team selection going with Kavanaugh, starting the game with Kavanaugh ahead of, for example, um, for example, Clark was a surprise for me. And um, yeah, they went with Noon and again, who actually set up their equaliser, didn't he? He uh, for um, From the free kick for, for Green, it was a very good ball into the box. But the Doc got off to the lead in 33 minutes and they'd be delighted that Gullen scored his first goal. Jamie Gullen for the club. Uh, when your striker gets off early, off the score sheet, it's always a, you know, a relief for that striker, I think, and a good sign. But I think Paul's a bit disappointed he didn't save the free kick, actually, to be honest, because, okay, there's a lot of pace on it. It's a good free kick, don't get me wrong, but it's nowhere near the corner. So I think the goalkeeper's be a little disappointed with that. Horgan actually won the free, and Horgan was playing very centrally in this game. And I think he's their best player still, and their most skillful player, and he's very good at driving at you. I'd, I'd be tempted to give him a free roll of 10 for most of the season where he can drift left and right also. Because he drifted right when he set up Kane in the second half at 1-0 up. Um, it was a very good move, actually, from Dundalk in the counter. And Kane's header just sits off the post. 2-0, and Rovers probably don't get anything from this game. But when Green did score in 59 minutes, it felt like it was kind of coming, really, to be fair. And there a couple of chances before that. Dar Burns, a great chance, header just wide. And, you know, at 59 minutes, so you're thinking, can I go on and win the game? So Dundalk would be quite pleased that maybe they, the, after the equalers had gone in, that... They weren't under siege pressure, let's say, from Shamrock Rovers. And uh, the dock will be encouraged by the performance because a lot of new players there. For example, High and Bradshaw in the middle of the park, two completely new players in the middle of the park. Walker, uh, the goalkeeper as well. So, um, yeah, they'd be pleased with that. and They'd be hoping to build on that. But Rovers, still a bit, not all over the place, but, um, you know... They're probably missing, even though they're a big squad and a good squad, they're probably still missing too many players that you will, than you would like going into a season, starting the season. So, you know, they won't want to start it slow again this season, but they'll be disappointed with the result and the performance. The Dock will be more happy generally with the result and the performance. So uh, they'll be, be interested to see how they do in the next game. But Finch Rovers won. Uh, Dundalk won at Tallis Stadium. Now we're going to Waterford Shelburne, guys, and this is where JP jumps in. The final game finished Waterford FC 1, Shelburne 1 at the RSC and uh, Waterford got off to a flying start in this one with uh, Asamoa with the first goal in three minutes. It might take the deflection off Tyreek Wilson, I think, but God, that pace. <laughs> I mean, good God. He just seemed to, 
I don't know, the Sear and Pace, but he kind of just booted the ball in front of him, basically, and ran <laughs> and, and from his own half. And literally in a straight line, he seemed to go all the way down to the pitch, uh, take a shot, come cross, and uh, think, I think it deflected off Wilson, in my opinion, went into the net. Yeah, what, a start, what, what a start that was for Waterford. And, uh, you know, Shells were shocked, I suppose. Shell shocked, you could say. But uh, Waterford tried, played three at the back in this game. Burke was left wing back, did power right wing back. Uh, with Leahy McCourt and Casper uh, Rakowski as centre back, but um, Barry Bagley apparently didn't see the game. But Barry Bagley, I've seen him play before, and he's a very good player. But a lot of people saying he was the best player in the pitch in the middle of the park. Captain as well, twenty one years of age. Par Yamond up front, who actually forced a good save from Connor Cairn. So they seem to have chances. Just seen in the highlights, Waterford to have scored a second in that for in that first half, but obviously didn't take it and. Uh, I think they sat back, started to sit back a bit later and Shelburne put pressure on them. And of course, Sean Boyd scored that goal after I think it was Shane Farrell played it into him. He equalised, but uh, Sean Boyd being Sean Boyd, then I don't know, a couple of minutes later, he decides he'd strike someone with an elbow and get sent off. I think it was a second yellow. It could have been a full red. Straight maybe. red. It was a straight red, was it? Yeah, it was straight red. And deservedly so, actually. But um, I don't know, at times, it looked like Duff was giving out to him as well as he's gone off, to be honest, as well. At times, he just... Um, I mean, come on, Sean. You know what I mean? Like he just loses the plot, doesn't he? He scores a goal. There's a chance Duff he might Fart, still win Duff the game. Actually, Who knows? You know? Duff actually commented about that and he's he? at the view afterwards. Yeah, he said it was deserved. That's what he said. That was his words. Oh, yeah, the red yeah, card was deserved. So, basically, yeah. So yeah, I, I would say that was Duff being calm. As you say, if he had been in the dressing room, it would have been a wee bit more than that and what he would say. But I think it's more a case um, of Sean Boyd, you know, um, I'm sure Duff has had a word with him before and said, look, calm down, you cannot be doing this stuff. Because he, he does he, he do, time, short like, fuse. He's a good player. Mm. Um, he's good at what he does, but he's a liability at times. Uh, it's not the first time he's got a, a straight red card for, for violent conduct, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, and look, he, he's, in, he's in a good position with a good team. Under a great manager, um, and Damien Duff, and if it if he doesn't curb his um, if he if he doesn't curb his uh aggression like that, it, it could end up with Shelburne could see him as out the door, out the door basically, um. And like he has a good player, like he was at fun heart. Frustrating thing about that is JP, if you're looking at it from Duff's point of view as well, you're not you're not three 0 down with a few minutes to no. go, and you've got frustrated and lashed out. You've actually equalized. You've just got yourself back into the game, and you've scored. Just got, yeah, you've just got yourself back into the game. You were the man that got us back yeah. into the game. We've still got an hour five. He's clearly got, got wound up. Head. Like that's, you feel like they players can just go up to him now and go and just wind them up. Yeah, you know? uh, and exactly as yeah, just. Going back to my point of if he doesn't curb it, clubs are going to turn around and say, target Sean Boyd. Just go up and say, wind him up, stand on his toe or something like that or, or hold his jersey mm. and, and he'll react. And and it's, uh, he, he has to, he has to get that out of his game. Um, all the rest, well, he's suspended now as well. Yeah. He'll miss a few weeks and Duff Three might want some more missed. as well. And, you know, Manny Smith played up front in this game as well, actually. So, yeah. well. he, It's not just Waterford game that affects him and Shelburne, it affects the next three games because for violent conduct, I'm nearly sure it's a three game ban. Um, mm-hmm. depending on the competition, very least, but I'm nearly sure it's three games for the league. So, mm-hmm. but look, go back to Waterford, it was an unbelievable breakaway. Um, Duff commented on that as well, actually, in his interview. It was it came from their free kicker corner, I think it was. And the keeper, keeper plays it out to him, actually. Sorry, but yeah, I, I think. He must might have must kicked it a wee bit because it's I'm not sure if it touched somebody or as he was kicking it it maybe hit somebody or whatever. Mm. But it just seemed that he was going for the long one on the air and then all of a sudden it ended up his feet in the halfway line. Mm. And I tell you what, that, that pace is gonna be that that's gonna kill some defend this team some teams this year. Um, especially for teams that like to defend on the halfway line. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna be an asset for, mm. for Waterford this year and um look we we spoke earlier about the the strike talk or deflection, but that's what he that's why you just hit it when you get on that situation, just smash it, and it could end up anywhere. And it did it. It hit Tyreek Wilson, um, and ended up past Connor Cairns and then the net. And 
great start this season for Waterford. The total opposite, they either first division opponents from last year, Galway, who went 1-0 down after three minutes. Um, and it gives you something they, they build on and hold on as the game goes on. Unfortunately, they couldn't do that. Um, Ten minutes or so, they go in the game and, and they conceded an equaliser. But um, they, they'll be delighted. Um, uh, I, I think it was at a capacity crowd at the RSC. I think it was over four and a half anyway. Yeah, um, yeah in around four and a half, which is incredible uh, for in the round considering that, a few years ago. And that. Uh, exactly. Um, they, they send them as home with a point. Look, they'd be disappointed they didn't win the game, but as we spoke in a way, that's earlier, a good thing, though, that they're disappointed to win the game. Yeah. No? Yeah. Oh, Duff, well, they Duff, played Shelburne. And... Duff, Duff commented on afterwards that del- he's delighted with the point, even though he feels they deserve the point. He's delighted, but he's not happy with the performance. Um, and he, uh, what he said as well was he made three substitutions on the hour mark and that didn't happen in his previous two years because they didn't have the squad to be able to do that. Um, so he, he said that's different now to what they had previously is they've got a bench that they, they, they can work with. Um, he touched on that the, the subs made a difference and even the, the, the interviewer had a, had agreed with him in that aspect that the, the subs made an impact for Shelburne. So look, for them as they've Shamrock Rovers at home next week um, and we all know Damon Duff, he'll not fear that. He'll embrace that. He's, he'll try and put that on these players. And, and Waterford, um, they're they're going to draw it. They'll see that as, as a, a big chance that they win a game. You know, um, if they can apply apply the same same performance levels that they did on Friday night up in Drogheda, yes, it's a tighter pitch, etc. But they, they'll be happy with that. It gives them something to build upon. Never going to need to draw the game now full of confidence, so they will. Absolutely, absolutely. Cheers, JP. We'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, an interesting first uh, night in the Premier Division. Subscribe to the channel, hit your bell notification button. Thanks for watching again. Cheers, JP. Thanks, Keith.